Now, now, beloved within the Christian church, beloved in the Christian church, and for, for other religions and denominations, this is a very urgent, urgent message, a very urgent, urgent message called the Equality Act, the judgment of the last great day in homosexuality. Now, here recently in our federal government, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris signed some federal laws protecting against discrimination against homosexuals. Basically now it's hate speech to call homosexuality a sin, um, to discriminate against them in public housing or in private institutions. It's, but it's considered discrimination to bar them from public housing and from private institutions, even Christian institutions that don't support their homosexual lifestyle. And it is so sad. The Bible clearly says that those who hold the truth in unrighteousness in Romans chapter 1 will be destroyed at the, of the, by the fires of the last great day. The same way the people destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19 of the fires at that time, but ahead of time. In the same way, in the last great hour, a thousand years after the second coming, the in the second resurrection, homosexuals will be burned up who haven't repented or forsaken of their sins. That's a biblical fact. Just like with any sin, whether it's fornication, whether it's adultery, whether it's murder, whether it's lust, whether it's um, defying parents or being disobedient to parents, whatever it is, it's a, it's a sin, but the Bible particularly calls homosexuality an abomination because it directly goes against nature. It goes against what nature has defined that God has gifted man for natural sexuality or human sexuality or natural um, function between a man and a woman. God did not design Sex to be between a man and a man, or a woman and a woman. That 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 goes against nature, beloved. And it's time to sign, cry, and tell the world her sins and and the church her sins. You know, the cup of iniquity for the world and the church is full. And I'm not here to put the um, cover over your eyes. And, and act like everything is cool and act like we just need to go along to get along and support these things to be to be good with the brethren or good with the world, good with the papacy. Pope Francis is a Jesuit. He's heavily into that um, gay agenda. Him and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And in fact, um, Pope Francis is actually allowing homosexuals to hold church office in the Catholic Church to be priests. And uh, he's actually allowing women to serve in the priesthood now, and he's all kind of stuff. And it's spilling over into other denominations, even my denomination. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has a transgender elder out there in California. And um, allowing people, homosexuals to hold church office looking the other way, and actually lesbian pastors over in the Chesterfield Conference when the Seven Nevin is church. Beloved, now is the time for the straight testimony and the sign cry against sin. Our Bible says those who commit fornication will go to hell. I see the book, she's always in that sermon, um, the lost in church. Those who commit fornication will go to hell. I don't, I don't need your approval, Seventh Day Adventist Church. I don't need your approval, Christian Church. I just need God's approval from the Bible and Sister White's writings. The Bible, you know, in Revelation 12, 17, defines the true church in these last days as those who can meet the, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here is the presence of the saints. Here they, they keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. It is defined the true church as those who are in a corporate structure, call themselves seven divisions or whatever. No. It defines a true church as those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And 
I'm not going to be, I'm not going to support any agenda, whether in my denomination or anybody else's church that supports things that are unbiblical. And this whole woman's ordination agenda, that's even in my denomination, beloved, Seven Adventist Church, is a homosexual agenda because you usurps male headship in the church and in the home. And beloved, it's now time for that straight testimony. So these men, they hold the truth but in unrighteousness. And, you know, these homosexuals that come out here and they, and they look so weird talking like girls and acting like little girls and, and all kind of nasty, disgusting, perverted things. And our schools, in our schools, beloved, our schools are actually allow girls to repeat weird homosexual acts between man and man and woman and woman. And this is our in our private schools. This is in our private schools. Our Christian schools, beloved, this must not be done. That is a perversion. It is a perversion, beloved. And it defiles the mind. You know, what does the Bible say? The Bible clearly says, um, finally, brethren, what sort of things are true, honest, just, lovely, of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. But like flip like like first Timothy 4 says, in the last days they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They want to be tickled, beloved. They want to be told that their lifestyle is okay. They don't want to be told that their lifestyle is going to make them be lost and take them to hell. But beloved, now it's time for the straight testimony. Now is no time to teach to tell them of the prosperity gospel. The seed into my ministry, you'll get big bucks and you'll do good and you'll good no matter how you live. And the deliverers you please have is your home. No, no. If you stay in sin and don't confess and forsake your sins, you're going to be lost. And even if you give a billion dollars to the church, that's not going to save you. The blood of Jesus saves you, not a zillion dollars to the church, beloved. It's time for this straight testimony. It's not time for this mamby, pamby foolishness. This mamby, pamby, milkman foolishness. At least seven devils minister the preaching, that Kenneth Copeland is preaching, that Tony Palmer preached. That Pope Francis is preaching. It's time for the straight testimony. You know, it's not time for this stuff that's not biblical. And Isaiah 58, 1 and 2 says, Sigh and cry and tell Israel her sins. And, you know, that's what time is, beloved. So, what does the Bible say? Luke 6 46. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Most congregation, say, Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for our wonderful mercy and blessings. Please help me to forgive all my enemies, Lord. My family who comes to my apartment and locked up medications, like cousins who have done stuff to me that have been unbiblical, like church folk who've lied on me and had a sinful agenda, like teachers and staff and schools and and, 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 and classmates who had a to go against God's word. Thank you for faithfully pulling me up out of the, the net they privily have laid for me, even though I have all these challenges, and fully pull me out of that net so I can totally fulfill the purpose that you have for me. I'm asking you save all of them without the loss of one, if that's your will, and let them see within me a character of Christ, not my character, but your character, because my character is flawed. And I'm asking you, Lord, I want you, when you come again, remember me to meet you in the air. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you, family.